If you spend any time out in the woods this spring, you already know we don't have to tell you how fierce the tick population is. We're going to show you coming up how bad it is, the diseases associated with ticks, and what you need to know to protect you and your family. They lurk in low-growing brush, under the leaves, just waiting for the opportunity to attach themselves to you. With his special fabric flag, field biologist Chuck Lubelsic is sweeping for specimens, and it doesn't take long for success. So we've got two different ticks here. Uh, the larger one with the white dot is going to be the American dog tick. This small reddish one is, is an adult deer tick. Today he has help Libby Henderson studying environmental science at the University of Southern Maine as an intern this summer with the Maine Medical Center Research Institute. We're collecting ticks, we're flagging for ticks, looking for uh, the ticks that carry disease. And it's just not Lyme disease you need to worry about anymore. There are several new diseases now being linked to deer ticks. One is called anaplasma and the other is babesia. That one tends to be severe, especially with people that have, um, are lacking a spleen or immunocompromised. Mm -hmm. But again, it's also treatable with antibiotics. Um, but we don't know how widespread these other pathogens are. Much of the current research in the field and back at the lab now focused on those new diseases. We travel to a second location for today's field study, a blueberry barren in West Kennebunk. The conditions were dry, so the ticks were hiding a bit. But the potential for a severe tick season is more than likely because of the winter conditions. Ideally, if you want to knock them back, you, you would want a really cold winter with minimal snow to really knock the numbers back. And we haven't had that for a few years. And over the years, they're learning more about how and where people are contracting tick-borne diseases. In most cases, people around their homes are dropping their guard. You know, they, they think, oh, I'll just go out to the back lawn for 30 seconds to grab something out of the shed, to, to get the kayak, to, to get the shovel for the garden. That's when a lot of exposure to ticks occurs. So the Charles Sweat Trail here at the Massabesic Experimental Forest is just one of many sites across the state where biologists are monitoring. And they're not only looking for ticks, but also mosquitoes, too, so they can trace and track disease. In Alfred, Jim Keithley, WMTW News 8.